Dobby appears. Well, I wasn't expecting to find you here. Fire and fire. The League of Villains. I feel like this is gonna make for a very colorable, colorful fight at one point in the show. Snatch, huh? That doesn't ring a bell. Why don't we forget about him and have a friendly chat? You can't fight like this. Just recover. This was really a day in <laughs> Dever's life. I know I said that already, but I only have small. He had to left, keep fighting. But I should be able to buy us some time. Are people watching this? People are still watching this, right? There's more than just two, though. The whole top ten. This girl's like uh, Fran from Final Fantasy XII without the annoying accent. Vanished. It's the same way they bounced out of Camino that day. Whatever the case, we managed to stop that juiced up Nomu. Idiot. This is just the beginning. Yeah, feels like a test of some kind. All right, so this actually is the intro. <laughs> I thought maybe it was a fake out intro because it's just like not animated. It's just sort of them like. I don't know, loitering, <laughs> walking. Although Ayama brings the heat with his twinkling. About Dabi, I get the sense that he's gonna be in conflict not only with the heroes, but with the villains. There was a scene where he seemed to imply that people didn't understand the value of the Nomus and he was taking matters into his own hands. I've also heard, and maybe I'm getting this mixed up, that in the manga, in the truck scene, Shigaraki killed someone. But in the anime, Shigaraki didn't kill, I don't think, but Dabi did. So I wonder if that's a key distinction that reveals sort of where the characters are going. There's sort of a key line that that crosses, and maybe it's just what I want to believe, but I feel like... Shigaraki is being sort of geared towards redemption, although that's a lot, I guess, and definitely isn't going to happen this arc, <laughs> or maybe for a long time, if ever. That wasn't how you said things would play out. Oh, is that a fact? I right, this meeting you and I got along better, that Bobby. I'm skeptical of. The fight was supposed to go down at a warehouse tomorrow. Oh, maybe it's more than I thought. What's his angle? You came to us saying you sympathize with our cause, yet you fought so hard to death. This is an angle. Good to you this is an angle. Community loses its faith in my work. The more they trust me, the more intel I'll be able to collect on them. Double agent kind of thing? Is that what's going on? He's like undercover, but his own undercover mission, it seems. We need you to infiltrate the League of Villains. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> I guess it's not in his own. Like with Gran Torino and the others? Where did you hear about that? This guy knows his stuff, man. He gets his intel. You're indifferent to prestige and fame, and you have your eyes fixed on your long-term goal. We think there's no one more suitable than you. Interesting. Yeah, he definitely thinks outside the box. That's clear. I'm He's sorry, not your token hero. Really, I am. Oof, guilt though. I sort of have to love the way that Hawks was introduced as this lackadaisical and carefree character. A slacker almost, but no, he's like one of the most dedicated of them all. He lives and breathes this stuff, and he's putting his life on the line right now, and acting in ways that are sort of maybe counter to his inclinations. He doesn't seem like a dishonest person, but he's being forced to put on this whole charade. I mean, that is not a carefree life, exactly. Oh, that was Snatch, the sand guy, right? You ever thought about the yeah. families of those The first on-screen hero casualty, I think. I've thought about it so much, it's driven me insane. We're back to guessing. <laughs> and I got nothing today. This was all my fault. Don't flatter yourself. My injuries are my own responsibility. Ultimate responsibility. The two new top heroes walking around together in broad daylight? We just drew too much attention and they decided to take a swipe at us. But what was it actually? Drop it. I made a scene while we were on the streets just so I could make this flimsy excuse. That's why he did that? That's sort of disappointing. I thought he actually was just like that. I don't know what to believe because Hawks is not a reliable source about who Hawks is, if that makes sense. Like his words don't match what I see him doing. Does he believe he's like this lazy, carefree slacker? I don't know. Is he convinced himself? The ultimate lie. You're going to need someone to back you up. A hero who can stop a Nobu like that. Aww. And you care about me so much, you'll be my bodyguard. They really bonded. They make a really cool pair, actually. Taking some R and R, big guy. Possibly. Okay, Family. Catch you later, then. Family stuff. I hope that'd be interesting. By going after the League of Villains from both the inside and the outside, we can cut off their retreat and box them in. Really? <laughs> You're calling it a proposition, even though you know I can't possibly refuse you. It's also isn't it a pretty hard sell to get the League of Villains to trust the number two hero? A kid. You mean a child safe to everyone? Backstory. We saw in the ending sequence he's being trained as a kid by men in suits. I guess it's, it's this agency. This boy has a natural... He is a true Endeavor fan. I love it. I want to live in a world where heroes have too much time on their hands. And I'll make sure that happens. As quickly as possible. 
underneath this sort of <laughs> lazy sounding goal, there's the idea of like, it's a safer world, right? And that's why they have time on their hands, I guess. Shoto got permission to leave campus for dinner. Cats don't like Aizawa? That's sad. Doesn't he love cats? It's a bad scar. Looks painful. Hey, you two, you promised you'd be in good moods. They're not in bad moods, necessarily. Sorry, sis, but I'm out. I can't do this. Yeah, this brother seems like the hardest sell, actually. But you can't rush these things, right? You can't undo, basically, a, a lifetime of family trauma with a dinner. It's hard to read Endeavor, but I feel like, for me, I would just want a, a chance at normalcy. It does come through that he he's trying, right? You neglected us. Even if you're the number one hero, that doesn't erase the past. Mom screams. Shoto's crying. What happened to our big brother, Toya? What happened to Big Brother Toya? There's more? I thought maybe we could act like a real family for once, you know? I was just looking forward to it so much, weren't you? <laughs> Todoroki seems to be in a really healthy place about all this. That was the first time I've ever seen Natsu show that much emotion. <sighs> it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a lot to process. I thought we already caught a ton of those Nomu things. Why was he having such a hard time with one? What? Did we see the same fight? Did we see the same fight? Did you not see the fist emerge from the flames? They're just so demanding. They're just always so demanding. Or is it the news? Are they only focusing on people who are that demanding? That could be it too. You gotta be careful over extrapolating the vocal minority into like all of society. He took the Nomu and his inner demons all the way to outer space, blew them up, barely survived, and still ended up on his feet somehow with his fist in the air. Was it because he wasn't smiling? Do you know what he's doing right now? Yeah, this guy got it. Risking his life for our sake. This guy's connected to life. I used to be a huge Very important fan NPC. Not, but Endeavor's totally my top hero after There you that. go, there are others. That's good. Yeah, speaking of over extrapolating. The child now known by the nickname Look Boy. Look Boy got famous. famous the Damn, this NPC really like took his moment and ran with it. A change is coming. Some unseen thing you built up in your prime. This conversation was so key. Oh my still somehow responsible for this. <laughs> I still can't forgive you for what you did to mom, and that's my choice to make. That's fair. I'll have to watch your actions to see if you earn that. Because I know something small can change a person, if they want it to. That's such a huge realization. But I've failed with my own family. How can I demand forgiveness after so long? It's a pretty great insight. I'm sorry for everything. Wow, that's amazing. I should have handled that conversation with Natsuo differently. So many things in that sequence. Firstly, Todoroki, I read that as very positive. I mean, it's a totally fair thing to say. And also it feels very insightful. I feel like anybody who has really committed to changing certain things or has had those periods of reflection is perhaps more willing to allow that in others. It might seem like a very self-serving route there, but I think it's, it's great nonetheless, where it's like, I want people to allow me the capacity to change, allow me to become better. And so because I want that to be true for me, I'm more willing to make it true for other people. I just want to live in a world where people can become better and can atone. It just feels richer to me, which is not the same thing as having to like everyone. It's not the same thing as having to forgive everyone. I don't think that they owe Endeavor any forgiveness. I think that's up to them and how they want to process it. And about what Endeavor said, what a amazing reflection. Like you want to be this great hero. You want to do all these amazing things and, and save people and look what you're doing to your own family. What right... <laughs> Do you have to be in any position of authority if not only are you not keeping your, your basic life in order, but you're like destroying it. Like you are the one destroying it. It's a lot to take in. That's got to be a major bitter pill. And that's great. You know, good. Good for him having that reflection. It's about time. Look at it. Now that you've accepted it, maybe you can do your best towards making something different in the future. You have this moment to work with. I think maybe one thing he's missing is that he can't rush people into accepting him. It's sort of an Ayayuki situation where you want an outcome with a family member, but the best way there is probably just ultra, ultra responsibility and self-focus without expectation of result. If you really have reflected and you really have changed, and the point of everything is that change, then that should be the focus and you let other people decide if they trust it or not. It gets a little bit dicey or when you need people's approval for that thing or you need people to recognize that, then it's not totally about the value element of it. It's sort of about desire for perception. I'll try to make amends. It's my only path forward. Do the best that you can for now. I worked on one for all until I was exhausted and passed out on top of my sheets. I mean, if you're gonna pass out somewhere, <laughs> that's not the worst place. And then Ayama came with cheese. I don't know. This is this is the moon landing. There are two more. I can't make. Is out. it one person? A dream. To what extent is it a dream? To grow as it's passed along. That's every inheritor. Seven people. All Might's teacher, including me. This guy looks like Goku or Saiyan. Dear foolish little brother. Yeah. Why do you resist? There's a very clear link to all for one. I'll never forget it. Two branches of the same tree. All for one called him little brother. 
That's who it is. Is he interesting? The first. What a callous. Yeah, this awesome theme. I missed it. It's so great. This isn't a dream, is it? This is one of those like Final Fantasy VIII dreams. Speaking of Final Fantasy, there's a reason he's seeing this. He was persecuted, called sick, and a monster. Yeah, this this is the a darker side of your society, right? The concept of humanity is broken in this world. I can use my power to restore a sense of order. So which one of us is actually indulging in self-interest, would you say? Who gets to decide? Without power, you can't hope to achieve anything. You're a pitiful hypocrite, but I still love you. <laughs> what a line. Choice to those without power. Mercy to those who have sinned. I mean, his power is not evil in itself. I mean, you can imagine some pretty, pretty great applications of it. It's pretty easy to see how he can help people and why they'd be grateful to him. But that's not the issue, right? It's the use of the power and sort of an arrogance of, of playing God and seeing other people as tools or, or being expendable towards your aim. You've stopped eating again. You're disintegrating into nothing. <coughs> Brother. The guy's principled. It's like the world from the comic we read together back when we were young. Except you gave up and only read through volume three. You missed <laughs> the end. The Demon King ruled that fictional land. This is very meta. The villain always loses in the end. And reality doesn't follow stock plots. I believe it's time you finally bend to my cause. I'll rewrite your story as well. Please, brother! I think he's trying to save him even in the dream. <laughs> even in the past. We're long past the singularity point. Singularity point? That was very direct. Very direct contact. Whoa, that's the end of the episode? Well, that was five seconds long. It's kind of intriguing to me in that conversation between the two brothers that it's sort of taken for granted that All for One is a, is a villain. I thought about this a little bit because I think at first glance, you'd think that no one would consider themselves a villain. I mean, this is not taking into account the actual legal categorizations in this show, but people don't generally like to think of themselves as being in the wrong or being bad, right? In fact, my gut sense is that actually some of the most dangerous people are probably people who consider themselves to be heroes because of the potential link to just, you know, hubris or maybe thinking situations are more simple than they are and, you know, overexerting one's influence, maybe. In the name of the good of others, right? That kind of thing. But I've also felt at certain points in my life where I am more likely to be a villain than a hero. And the reason I say that is because I'm just a natural contrarian and I'm also just insanely willful and stubborn. And I don't accept that things are correct or right or moral just because certain things are the prevailing sentiments. It's hard for me to accept ideas that I'm handed. And I think a lot of the prevailing moral structures at any given time are not really based on any kind of rich, deep understanding that exists societally wide, but is more like like a code of belief that's enforced by the majority. That makes sense. Like this is the way things are. And it's really easy for me to imagine me falling on the wrong side of that. I have that risk of arrogance and I also have the risk of being spiteful. You know, I think anyone who has ideas <laughs> has that potential pitfall where it's like, why doesn't anyone understand? Why can't people see the way things ought to be? You know, that kind of, that kind of arrogance. If only people could see things through my eyes, you know, but everyone feels that way. And I feel like perhaps for people like that, for people who really feel like they've gotten to an idea or gotten to an issue and just don't see that sort of analysis being reflected in the people that are trying to get them to fall in line with the the idea that's being pushed on them can sort of just accept the role as a villain. So it's a small thing, but like hearing all for one talk about the whole villain thing. I mean, he doesn't seem to lack conviction. He seems to be very connected to who he is and doesn't really have like superfluous baggage of needing to be liked, let's say, needing to be a hero. He knows what his role is. He knows what he wants to do, or he does need to be liked, but he can get that from his sort of community, I guess you'd call it, rather than society at large. Maybe he can assign that value to their opinions as sort of this inclusive social club or something like that. So yeah, now we have multiple threats that seem like they will probably intersect. We have Don and the Nomu. And we have what I'm guessing will be the re-emergence of All for One. Very interesting. See you next time when we finally figure out why All Might's comic book is in the bushes.